We saw the craziest thing in Parliament earlier today. See, today is a massive day for a couple of different reasons. It's Justin Trudeau's return to Canada, return to Parliament. After going on a really large American platform, uh, there's an argument to be made there that that's foreign interference, foreign election interference, using uh, Stephen Colbert's late night show to go around and quite literally take shots, take aim at Pierre Polyev and basically belittle Canadians. But aside from that, which I don't want to, you know, just throw under the rug, which it's a massive deal that he's done that. Aside from that, today is the vote of non-confidence where members got together in parliament and voted for the potential of an election. Now, this is something that Canadians want. You see it from all different social media aspects, whether you look on X, whether you look on YouTube, whether you look on Facebook, whether you go to protests, whether you talk to people, hell, whether you look at merchandise, political merchandise, how many people are wearing, cons or, uh, not conservative, how many people are wearing liberal merchandise? Not many. How many people are supporting the conservative merchandise aspect or even avenues like this? You know, wacko Trudeau has to go and supporting channels like this. You see it all the time that people are shifting more towards conservatism because our government is so radical. It's gone so far down that woke, radical, left-wing, insane spiral. And Justin Trudeau is ruining our country, not just with woke identity politics. But with the economy, he is driving us into so much debt. And his excuses are, we're fighting climate change. And he's always, always combated on that. How much more money, how much more time for these climate taxes is it going to take to solve forest fires? Because that's the whole purpose of it. Never, ever, ever is able to answer that. So aside from all of that, as it progressed, as question period went on, you saw something that we've never seen before. Justin Trudeau used parliamentary, unparliamentary language, which is something, yes, he has done in the past. He did say crap, and the House Speaker gave him four chances to apologize. But that's not the only thing that the House Speaker tried to get him to apologize or retract on. Justin Trudeau also accused Pierre Polyev and the Conservative Party of making casual homophobic comments. That's a really wild accusation to make that goes unsubstantiated on a, dare I say, global platform. I know most Canadians are watching, uh, mostly Canadians are watching, you know, question period in Canadian politics. But, I mean, we, there is even an international audience here on Mr. Sunshine, as well as uh, House of Canada, which is where I live streamed it over 89, I think 9,000 peak concurrent viewers. Insane. Highly recommend you guys go subscribe to that channel because the community over there is also very incredible. You had Justin Trudeau, who was given many, many chances, four to be exact, to make apologies and retract his statements and these accusations for Pierre Paul F. Now, if we go back earlier this year, Pierre Poiliev was kicked out for using unparliamentary language, calling Justin Trudeau right here, a wacko, just like the sticker says. Prime, or, um, House Speaker was giving him one or two chances to apologize, and Pierre did not. He then got ejected. Justin Trudeau got four chances and still did not apologize for the baseless accusations of making homophobic comments. But he did apologize for saying crap. Now, it's not a heartfelt apology. It wasn't a heartfelt retraction. In fact, he stuttered ums and ahs and bumbled his way through the, uh, the speech. This is a blatant abuse of power. And I have said before that if the House Speaker Greg Fergus abuses his power again and mutes the microphone on a national broadcast that we are allowed to see, we are entitled to see that. And in fact, I, dare I say like I did at the start of the stream, if Greg Fergus abuses his power again, I will start a petition because it's not only a blatant abuse of power, it's also discriminatory to the visually impaired. There are people out there who cannot see, who are visually impaired, who rely on their ears to be able to see, right? What is happening? And Greg Fergus thinks that he has the power to take that away. He's putting blindfolds on people, or I guess in this case, earmuffs on people. And so I will be starting a petition. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where's the link? Look, folks, look, I'm 30. I'm not a young cat anymore. I'm not in my 20s. It's going to take me a little bit of time to figure out how the hell to start a petition. And you're right. 
I could have put that time into this right now before making this video. And in hindsight, I probably should have to make that petition. But just hold on. All right. I will figure it out tomorrow or this week. And I will tell you, you'll be the first to know when that petition is ready. Without further ado, sit back, relax and enjoy this footage from that's taken from the highlight reel of my live stream over on House of Canada. But before we do, I gotta, I gotta ask you guys, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It's the freest way to promote and to support this channel. And without further ado, here we go. Also, sorry for all the yelling. It is live. I drink this much coffee, sometimes times two, and I, I, I can't help it. I'm into this stuff. Here we go. After nine years of the NDP Liberals, taxes up, costs up, crimes up, Time's Time's up. up. Today, we'll vote to trigger a carbon tax election between the costly carbon tax coalition of NDP Liberals who tax your food, punish your work, double your housing costs and unleash crime and chaos, or common sense conservatives who will ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Why can't we bring it home today? How <laughs> money! Look at the enthusiasm, Hello, man. Mr. Speaker, again, with the clever little performance of slogans he's memorized without any actual solutions for Canadians. He doesn't care about Canadians. He cares about his own political self-interest. If he cared about Canadians, he wouldn't have voted against dental care. He wouldn't have voted against more spaces at $10 a day child care. He wouldn't have voted against initiatives that are growing the economy, putting more money in people's pockets. He wants a class climate change election. Let's have that election in the right time where we're putting more money in the pockets of Canadians. This is not the time for that. We're going to continue to deliver for Canadians. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at the fake enthusiasm. Look at the conservatives. It's a zoo. Don't mute the microphone, you son of a gun. Don't you dare mute it. Let it happen, Fergus. This is democracy. He didn't mute the mic. He didn't mute the mic. I appreciate that. Leader of the opposition. Well, he just said he wants a carbon tax election on his plan to quadruple the tax to 61 cents a liter. If so, will he call it today? <laughs> yes. Look at that. You can't beat the conservative enthusiasm down on the floor. It's just not going to happen. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I believe this uh, on today we will see that this House does not have confidence in the leader of the Conservative Party. I hope he eats those words. We have delivered, are continuing to deliver, reduced emissions, more money in the pockets of Canadians and success in the fight against climate change as we create jobs and build a stronger future. We are focused on delivering for Canadians the things that actually matter while he's focused on slogans and clapping. Mr. Speaker, we're going to focus on being there for Canadians. <laughs> as they clap, <laughs> like two of them stand up. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he's concerned that we're clapping for him. He agreed to a carbon tax election on his quadrupling of the tax to 61 cents a litre, where Canadians will choose between an NDP Liberal government that has taxed their food, punished their work, doubled their housing costs, and unleashed crime and chaos in their communities, or a common-sense Conservative government to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. He's bragging that he has more politicians on his side. Isn't it really the case that in Canada, the people decide? Wow! W's for Pierre. The people want it. The people have spoken. Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, with the Canada carbon rebate, the price on pollution puts more money No, it doesn't, dude. ...out of 10 Canadians right across the country. But we already know 
from her, his misunderstanding of carbon pricing that the Conservative leader doesn't understand math or economics. What's increasingly clear is he doesn't understand science as well. That's why I'd be happy to give him a briefing on the science of climate change. And good news on this one, it doesn't require a security clearance for it. Oh, holy crap. He's got some pokes. He's got some jokes. What the leader of the opposition refuses to accept is that cuts to services and programs that Canadians are relying on is not going to grow the economy, is not going to help anyone through. We have the strongest balance sheet in the G7 right oh, now. Oh, come on. Deficit, the lowest debt to GDP ratio. Companies from around the world are investing in Canada because they believe in Canadians. We are wanting to set that strong fiscal position in service of Canadians who are hurting right now. We want to invest more in dental, more in supports more in growth and jobs and he wants to cut at this particular time you're wastefully spending all our money bro after nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister Canada has the worst mortgage debt has had the worst housing inflation in the GD in the G7 and now has the worst GDP per capita change since the Great Depression and the worst by far in the G7. Those are the devastating statistics that, re that result in very real human costs. That's the reason we have 1,400 homeless encampments in one province alone and 2 million people lined up at food banks. Won't he realize that doubling housing costs and taxing people's food has very real human costs? We have the best balance sheet yet right on all time highs for food banks. Speaker, when that individual was mm. Harper's failed housing minister. He bought this he built guy. six affordable homes across the entire country only. He did not help with the investments that Canadians needed. And his so I thought he built over like 200,000. Now, which is again, more performance than substance. Lots of slogans, no actual solutions, uh, is not going to deliver for Canadians either. We're doing what he didn't do, which is work with housing uh, advocates, work with municipalities, work with provinces and deliver the homes Canadians need. Yeah, right, Trudeau. Lots of brochures, not many for sure. When I was housing minister, rent and mortgage payments were half of what they are now, and there were almost 200,000 of those affordable homes built right across Canada. Now this prime minister wants to tax bring in a massive tax on home builders. Ooh, his first ever hiccup. Capital gains. Now, the uh, most preeminent economist in Canada, Jack Mintz, reveals that that would cost our economy 400,000 jobs and $90 billion. Where are those 400,000 unemployed Canadians going to be able to get the food and the money to pay their mortgages? He headed towards the railing and straightened back out. No ums and ahs. Uh, the Right Honourable Prime Minister takes the floor. Man, so like good. I all members to please not take the floor when they're not recognized by the chair. The Right Honourable hey, Prime Minister. Better than muting. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition is instrumentalizing Canadians who are suffering right now to try and score cheap political points. What he is not offering is any sort of solution for Canadians. We put forward the most ambitious housing plan uh, in decades because we know that working with municipalities, working with provinces, working with nonprofit agencies and charitable foundations is a way of delivering homes. I was just in Vancouver speaking to a young student who got into an apartment because of part the same one that's on the NDA set up. These are things that make a real difference in people's lives, but he doesn't care. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, I will talk, comment on uh, one uh, spectacular uh, uh, social housing project of his, and that is the brand new lavish apartment that he bought his friend, the new Consul General, to New York. Nine million dollars for our, his friend Tom Clark to have stunning powder room finished in jewel onyx, crystal gold quartz, quartzite countertops, a handcrafted copper soaking tub. 
custom bronze bathroom fixtures, Holy $5, shit. $5,000 coffee machine. Did the Prime Minister what? go and inspect this palace in the sky on his recent trip to New York? Yeah. <laughs> How does he find this info? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, engaging with international leaders on fighting climate change... <laughs> Global you gotta spend money to make money, eh? Unequivocally for Ukraine. <laughs> you gotta spend money to make money. That's Trudeau's outlook. <laughs> hey man, he's not muting the mic. He's not muting the mic. Colleagues, just as I said before, as just as I said earlier, I would ask all members to please not take the floor unless they're recognized by the speaker so that we can... A hey, shout out the House Speaker for not muting the mic. Answers. The Right Honourable Prime Minister from the top, please. Mr. Speaker, don't worry, on this side of the House, we're used to casual homophobic comments from the other side of the House. Whoa! What is it about... Whoa! What? Uh, uh, uh. Make them apologize and kick them out! Are you kidding me? his intrusive thoughts go through. Uh-uh. Bro! Drop some else. Don't mute the mic! Don't mute the mic! No! <laughs> Your mother... <laughs> oh, my God! They gotta figure out what to do. They gotta figure out what to do. I'm sorry for screaming. I'm so sorry for screaming. This is so unprecedented. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Are you kidding me? Trudeau let his intru- Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, just let his intrusive thoughts go through by making that comment, accusing the Conservative Party of making casual homophobic comments. Are you kidding me? You can't just. I understand parliamentary privilege is one thing, but you cannot make that claim. That is going to be taken by people that are going to clip it, including myself, CTV, mainstream media. That is so inappropriate and dangerous for the Prime Minister to say that. (laughs) Pierre Polyev's right-hand person, Melissa Lansman. (laughs) Isn't she, you know what I'm saying? Isn't she, doesn't she support? I heard comments uh, that... I, because it was not on microphone, I chose not to get up. I would ask, nonetheless, that the, uh, we all treat each other with, with the presumption of honour and respect. And I'll ask the Prime Minister to please withdraw that comment and to start, uh, to start his comment again. Under the... Op- colleagues... I, wow. As I said, which I could not, I do not, could not stand up because I did not know who said it. But we should be. Nuh-uh. You should be kicked out immediately for that. I don't appreciate when we would tar the entire uh, 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 members with that concern. And I'm going to ask the Honourable Member, please, to withdraw that comment, start his question again, and let us presume the better natures of all members of Parliament here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister from the top. Mr. Speaker, standing up to bullies requires us to call them out on their crap. Chat, kick them out. Give them the same treatment that you have to Pierre and other people. Kick them the fuck out of the house. Uh Uh-uh. You're accusing Pierre and the conservatives of making casual homophobic comments. Get out. And you're not retracting it? Get out. (laughs) 
Uh-uh. I'll invite the Prime Minister once again no. to rise on his feet. No. And thank you. Double down, I dare you. I will happily withdraw my comment if the member who suggested... No, you don't get to negotiate. Clark stands up, takes responsibility for his... Kick him out. Kick him out. Kick him out. Kick him out. If he doesn't kick him out, man... This is, this is insane. This was not on the bingo card today, folks. You gave him a second and third chance. Kick him out. Holy shit. Yeah, this is holy shit, everyone. Sorry for swearing. Sorry for yelling. I'm just... I'm just trying to be honest here, man. This is crazy. As I indicated to all colleagues here, I was not able to hear or track the source of that statement. And I'm just asking the Prime Minister to be the, the better person. And to please just withdraw the comment. No! Question. No! Kick him out! Prime Minister. You don't get four chances! Mr. Speaker, I withdraw uh, the comment about um, uh, defecating. Um, uh, I certainly. Uh, Using the word crap, I, refer, I shouldn't use that. I know crap is unparliamentary, but I will also, Mr. Speaker. What the hell's happening? Someone says something that is clearly homophobic. Not them. I'm not accusing them of homophobia. You absolutely did. Homophobic. Kick him out, Speaker. Kick him out. How many chances are you going to give him? I appreciate the Prime Minister withdrawing his comment, and the Chair accepts him withdrawing that comment. Oh, come on! As the Speaker had indicated, sometimes, sometimes in this chair, and for those who have occupied this chair or who will occupy this chair will understand, it is a very difficult decision day to day. He's going to kick him comment. out. I He's going to kick him out. He said it, and the Speaker chose for the reputation of this House for us to move on from that comment. I asked the, ask the Prime Minister to withdraw the comment. I appreciate you withdrawing the comment. The Prime Minister, please respond to the question that was asked by the... No! Mr. Speaker, I know the very idea of standing up for Canada's rights and values on the world stage makes the leader of the opposition's skin crawl. What is it exactly? Is it standing up to fight climate change? Is it standing up uh, for women's rights? Is it standing up for democracy rights and freedom of the press? Whatever it is, he sure doesn't like it when Canada stands proudly on the world stage because he wants everyone to think that Canada is broken. Well, Canada's not broken. Canada's the best country in the world. No, uh uh. Kick him out, dude. Wow. This is so corrupt. At the start of this live stream, I said I still had some faith in our system. I don't. Mr. Speaker. He refers to the Canada Carbon Rebate as a phony check. At least he recognizes that it exists, which is new from uh, just a few months ago. The Canada Carbon Rebate, as defined by, as uh, investigated by the Parliamentary Budget Officer, puts more money, hundreds of dollars, back in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadians. But it exactly doesn't. The middle class and those working hard to join it who need support while we fight climate change, while we reduce emissions, while we grow a stronger economy with good jobs for future generations. He has no plan for the economy, no plan for the future. So when is the climate going to be fixed? The Honourable Leader of the Office. How much money? My common sense plan is to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. But let's talk about education. Talk about education. The carbon tax will cost Saskatchewan schools $204 million dollars. That's the equivalent of approximately 2,000 teachers losing their jobs. 
all to pay tax to heat schools on, in cold Saskatchewan winters. Why is the Prime Minister forcing provinces to cut teachers and education to pay for his greedy, quadrupling carbon tax? Right, yeah. mm -hmm. right Honourable Prime Minister. He goes once again with his little performances, Mr. Speaker, the little rhymes and slogans. The reality Performances when he was just on the late night show? Are you kidding me? In Saskatchewan is wildfires, droughts, floods, uh, issues that are being increased because of the impacts of climate change. And if we do not continue to take ambitious action, future generations will pay dearly for inaction by governments uh, like the government in Saskatchewan. Uh, that he wants to emulate. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, we put more money in people's pockets while fighting climate change, and we're going to keep doing that. Yeah. Here comes the smackdown. Speaker, screaming and hollering. <laughs> will not distract from the very serious question I asked. Uno reverse card. How many nurses and how many teachers will lose their jobs because his greedy carbon tax quadrupling will drive up costs to heat schools and hospitals? Here, here. How many? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. Teachers and nurses across the country are terrified of conservative That's policies great. that cut programs, that cut services, that no. cut supports for the most vulnerable, for those who work hard to care for other Canadians, whether it's their opposition to pharmacare, which would be delivering free insulin and free prescription contraceptives, whether it's investing in a school food program going to help 400,000 kids with more food right across the country. That leader has opposed the things that nurses and teachers care most about. So let's not take any lessons from that guy. Wow. He's triggered. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He goes from screaming and waving his arms around radically when I mention the carbon tax to bragging about a program that doesn't even exist. His multi-million dollar school food program hasn't served a single ham sandwich, a single little bowl of craft dinner, not one meal to one child. It exists wow. to feed bureaucracy in Ottawa, not kids in schools. So once again, put aside the grand dramatic performances and answer the question, how many Ooh. doctors, nurses, and teachers will lose their jobs between, because of the quadrupling carbon tax? Let's go! Parents should be feeding their kids, not the government. I think it'd be instructive to look at how many doctors and teachers have lost their jobs because of conservative governments over the past number of decades. And that's exactly what this leader is proposing once again. I will tell you, Mr. Speaker, because I once had a job as a teacher, and I was proud of serving kids every day. <laughs> oh, no. No, don't bring that up. Oh, no. Don't bring that up. <clears throat> hey, he's not muting the mic. He's not muting the mic. He's shushing. Let's go, Greg Fergus. I can get behind that. The Honourable Prime Minister, 15 seconds left on the clock. Yes, I was proud to be a school teacher, Mr. Speaker. Why did you leave early, Trudeau? Back on the lives of thousands of kids over the course of my career. I'm proud to bring their voice. Who signed the NDAs? We continue to put forward how we support our kids, how we support the vulnerable, as opposed to the cuts that they propose. That's right. Who signed the NDA?